We are officially live on YouTube for the Thursday edition of the Not Your Average Investor Show. The JWB Red Dog of the Week. Week, 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 week. I'm your host, Pablo Gonzalez. With me, as always, the man I like to call GC because of his genius concepts, because of the way he knows how to generate cash flow, because he's a great co host, and because his parents named him Greg Cohen. Say hello, Greg. Hello, everybody. Fantastic to be with you today. And with us, as always, our magnificent community manager. She brings us the moments that matter, and that's why we call her MTM. She is Madison the Magnificent. Say hello, Madison. Good to be back here with the fam on the POT dubs. If you are joining us on YouTube, this is your first time joining us. Normally, I'm like at a couple notches higher. I'm a little under the weather today. So bear with me if I stumble through things that I can't pronounce or other things that never happen because I'm always perfect. But the best thing that you can do is go to nyais.com. Join us live for one of these live shows here on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1230. And if not, you know, you can always catch it on the podcast or YouTube. But the key to being here is what, GC? What do they get to be a part of? The roll call, baby. The roll call. We got Madison in the chat welcoming everybody. We got our leadoff hitter. John Henning. John Henning saying good afternoon. We got the Duchess in the house, Karen Jensen, welcoming everybody. I'm assuming I'm assuming that the first fam is in the house, and we will salute, salute you. In a you. <laughs> so we will salute you, Duchess. We got Lee, the MVP Bishop, batting third today. Good afternoon, everybody. We got Leslie Wilson checking in from Denver. We got Raul Tirado saying hello, everybody. Rolls, Rolls coming to the meetup, right? Not I to, was going to say. There's three in a row that are coming to the meetup. We'll have the MVP, we'll have Leslie, and we'll have Raul at the meetup here coming up on February 25th. All right, not to give too much away there. We got the touchdown maker in the house. Shannon Baker, touchdown maker. Shannon Baker, followed up by the mountain man. Bill Green. Billy Green. I like I like Billy Green. If that's cool, Bill, let me know if that's okay. We got Pedro Nasianceno checking in from Jersey. Good to have you. We got the ringmaster in the house. Andrew Barnhill. Andrew Barnhill. We got Leo Faraganan. Dun, 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 dun. Faraganan. Dun, 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 dun. Good morning, all. Let's rock, you guys. Got well soon. Thank you, Leo. I appreciate it. We got the early bird in the house. Dean Curry. Dean Curry's in the house. Checking in from Columbus, Ohio. Good to have you back, Dean. We got Donna Chica is back from Bakersfield, California. Donna, past, past star of the show. She's kind of a legend in these parts. She is. She is. The legacy is built, and it continues to provide each and every show. We love you, Donna. I love it, Don. I love it. We got Nadim Shah with his trademark. Oh, good afternoon. He's with his family today in Toronto, negative 19 degrees. Nadim, we are sending you Florida warmth from these parts Whoa. over here. It's like a light summer day out here. So that's a, that's a brag to our friends. Does, does Punxsutawney Phil even come out in negative 19 degrees? I think, Punta, I think Punxsutawney Phil gets Punxsutawney frostbite if he gets yeah. if he gets out at negative uh, nineteen. I don't want to. I don't. I don't wish that upon anybody. We got Keitha Janella checking in from San Diego. I think I think Keith is coming to the to Keith the is to coming the, to the tour. It's I like love a, it. I man, love it. Gonna... We got our favorite name to pronounce. GC Aaron O'Neill into the light. <laughs> it's just Aaron O'Neill. Good to have you in here, Aaron. And we got Karen Jensen. First family's on an excursion. So she so Karen, Karen is here as the as the ambassador of the first family. So we salute you either way, Duchess. Good to have you in the house. We got the man that everybody knows. Noah Rundari. Noah Rundari. Hello, everybody. Hello, Noah. We got Michael Santorius in the house. Afternoon, everybody. Anybody else checking in here? David Baird saying hello, everybody. Welcome to the show, David. Good to have you here. And now once we're done with the roll call, we get into on Thursdays, we get into my favorite segment. And that is when Madison shares good news. What's the good news, Madison? Hi, everybody. I do have some really good news. I talk about it all the time. JW Cares is probably one of my favorite parts of this company. If you don't know, it is a charitable arm of JDB Real Estate Capital. It is what we get to do the good with. So a little bit of background about JWB or JDB Cares. Um, we get to do a bunch of cool things. We get to hold a golf tournament every year to raise money to give a home away to a veteran. We get to go out once a month as a team and volunteer at different places. We just volunteered at the River Keepers, keeping our rivers clean. But introducing something else that we are getting to do to kind of raise money for JWB Cares is a 50-50 raffle. So if you don't know what a 50-50 raffle, it is just your basic raffle. But instead of raffling off different prizes, we are raffling half of the money we raise. 
So I will put the link to donate and enter the raffle into the chat. So look out for that. But it is kind of like a little background. It is $10 a ticket, or it is $50 for 10 tickets, or it is $100 for 25 tickets. So the more tickets you buy, the more chance you get, and it's going to a good cause. So it'll all go to JW Cares to be put back into the community and be able to help the, the city we love so much. So. And raffle time is something that's kind of new for us here at JWB. I think this is the second time that we have done it and really excited for us as a community to show what we can do to help contribute to the good that JWB Cares does and to help with affordable housing. Remember, every dollar that we raise through uh, the 50-50 raffle and through all of our donations goes 100% to building a new home that we get to give away to a uh, very deserving veteran here in the local community who could use a hand with a help with affordable housing. This year, this will be our fifth house that we build and donate to residents. We've done it each and every year for the last four years. And, you know, our mission is to to help, you know, our local community in ways that just can continue to have more and more impact. And so really would love all of your support. Again, you can go to jwbrealestate.com slash raffle. Last time we did this together, all of us, we raised about $16,000 through this raffle, through, through the donations. And so that means that one of you, one person last year walked away with about an $8,000 check. And so for all of us, if we can come together, uh, help for a great cause, one of us will walk away with a very large check as well, in addition to the good feeling of helping and supporting an amazing cause. So this is going on all this is raffle season right now. And what we're going to do to make it extra special is we're going to reveal the winner at the JWB Not Your Average Investment Tour, which like all of you who are here attending live are pretty much all coming anyways. You do not have to be in attendance live on the 25th when we announce the winner to win. But if you're there, it's going to feel even more special. So we're raising money through the 25th of February. And yeah. We're going to announce it live with all of you there. It's going to be a great thing. So thank you all in advance for all of your support. Let's see what we can do. I love it, man. I love the I love the 50-50 raffle. I love the veteran gets a home. We all get to participate in something fun. Somebody walks away with a little bit of money, add a little juice, add a little gambling to the excitement. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be against that. And I like to call that good news. Thanks, Madison. That was awesome. And now speaking of the raffle and speaking of a couple of things, we got a recurring announcement, GC. I think we got to, I think we got to talk about that February 25th, not your average investment tour. You, you can see the details at jwbrealestate.com slash tour, but we are getting together in Jacksonville Saturday, February 25th, and it's got to be a jam packed agenda getting together at nine in the morning. We're going to check in, have a little introduction, get to know each other. Add a little education about the market and what's going on. 9.45 to 10.30, we've got a Not Your Average Investor panel. We're going to have three of you from the community up on the stage. You get to pick their brain directly. Whatever, whatever you want to know, whatever you want to ask about the investing journey and the investor journey of our Not Your Average Investors, you get to do it there in person. Then we're going to go on a property tour, right? We're going to do a, a live not your average investor show at these properties. We're going to be a POTW and show you what you got going on. If you want to come look, touch, feel it, see the neighborhood, see the stuff that JWB is doing, see how close it is to downtown and all those good things. 1230 to two o'clock lunch is provided two to 430 downtown Jacksonville tour. You're going to see all the exciting things that are happening in the urban core of Jacksonville. And then at 430, the moment that we've all been waiting for from Saturday, we get to do a little happy hour. We get to the 50, 50 raffle drawing. And from there on out, who knows, who knows where the night's going to lead. We're going to, we might do some fun stuff on Friday on informally. We might stick around. I know that there's a music festival going on in downtown that night. So a lot of cool things are going to be happening. GC. What, what did I miss there? Well, I mean, I was in a meeting this morning and I was asking our team, it's like, how many people do we have signed up? And I was blown away. I think we have 19 folks that are already signed up, signed, sealed, delivered, paid and ready to rock and roll for this tour. And, you know, we've still got a few weeks left to hopefully, you know, have a few more folks join us. So, I mean, when we started this thing out, Pablo, you and I, when we were like, oh, how many folks do we think we're going to get? We're like, oh, you know, I mean, 
we had a bunch of people last time, but this time you got to pay to be there. And we're like, you know, it's on a Saturday and all that. We were like, I don't know, maybe 10, 15. And we're already at 19. So I wanted to give a special shout out to those folks who are already here and, and signed up and ready to go. We got Leslie Wilson, Raul Tirado, Amy Matthews, Christopher Gala, Keitha Gianella, Jen Filzen and Renee Ariola, Aaron O'Neill, and Ernest Opperly, Jack Chatta, Jeff Wonder, Kelly Barenbaum, Stephen Booth, Bob Wiesner, and there might be a few that Tony D is, Tony D. Uh, is here. Anthony Aiello is bringing a few friends. And there's a number of you that have reached out and just had a few more questions. So really encourage you to sign up. I think it's going to be an incredible day. It's going to be a little bit different than the Not Your Average Investor meetups that we've had in the past with some of the ability to get hands-on going and seeing actual properties, which folks have just reached out and said, this is exactly what I was looking for. So we're excited. And then the one thing I didn't even tell you yet, Pablo, is folks are starting to ask where they should book their accommodations. We're going to send out an email with all this information this week. So just know that that information is coming to you. Um, but what you can do is stay at one of the JWB Airbnb properties, if you would like, which would be cool, closing the JWB circle here. And for any folks that register through our community here, get a little discount too. We're going to give you a discount code so that you can register for a JWV Airbnb and take 15% off your stay. So yeah, there you go. We're excited. Come join us. Let's go. How do, how do people how do people do that? If they want to stay at one of the Airbnb properties, what do they need to do? Well, so it's in the email, it'll have the link where you can go, or you can just find out the Airbnbs if you go to jwbrealestate.com slash tour. All the accommodations are listed there, as well as other hotels if you don't want to stay in a JWB Airbnb. And so there's a special thing you have to do to get the, the promotion, though. So you have to put in the code, which is JWB Tour, but you have to put it in a special place and all that good stuff. So be on the lookout for the email, especially if you want to get that special code. If you do want to stay in a JWB Airbnb, it'll be that email will be coming your way this week. That's awesome, man. It's so cool to hear those names, GC, right? Because like when you were reading out a list of those names, I'm like, man, you know, a year, a year, a year and a half ago, you would have read out all those names and I had never met any of them in person. But now you read out those names and about half of them we already know, you know, like we've, we've met IRL, right? Whether, whether it was Jeff Wonder in Vegas or Leslie that we met in Vegas or some of the ones that came to the last, like Aaron that came to the last one and stuff like that. And I just, I just keep thinking of how as, as time goes on, every time that we get a new list of people, a new, a new IRL meetup, you know, you know, more and more people and it, it's just become like a really, you know, this community is real, but something about getting together in the same place and like sharing that time together and all riding along in the bus and being goofy afterwards and stuff like that, how, how it really grows this bond, right? Like I, you know, I um meet up with Bob Wiesner for coffee when he's in town or, you know, all these different, all these different things that, that make this stuff so much more than, um, than a business thing or a, or a wealth building thing, right? Like it really is, it really is community, man. I love this stuff. Love it. I love it, man. People are coming from all over too. I think about the States that are, people are flying from to be here. It, it's just very, it, it is very touching for Pablo and I, I mean, we, yeah. we literally, it really means a lot that you all, see enough value in what we try to do each and every day here that for the Not Your Average Investor community that you're all taking time out of your schedule. And, and it's going to be a great group. It's just a quality, quality group of folks that want to be around like-minded individuals. Love it, man. Love it. Speaking of like-minded individuals from other states, Billy Green checking in in the chat saying you guys can stay in one of my new JWB properties under contract as of two days ago. That's Bill right. In, man. Yeah. I don't know if he's coming to the tour, but he's he he is he is under contract. That's awesome, Bill, man. Good to good to see that, man. Mountain man. Way to go, buddy. The mountain man coming to the coming to the flat areas of Texas, flat areas of Florida over here. All right. So now that we got that out of the way, we're gonna move. Oh, wait a minute. Bit, 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 we got some breaking news. GC, what's breaking? What is breaking? Well, you know, the Fed has raised interest rates another quarter point. No, I'm sorry. Fed has raised the Fed funds rate another quarter point. Sorry for misspeaking there, which indirectly typically has an effect on your long term mortgage rates as well as your other things that you have to borrow money and spend interest on. So we should all be paying attention to what the Fed is doing as we are seeing that has a dramatic impact on the economy. And for those who, you know, maybe haven't been paying attention or maybe you're new to the show, we've been talking about inflation and the Fed's response to it for years now, actually, even before it became the topic du jour. And so we have seen this is the eighth 
increase in the Fed funds rate. And what you have seen since March of last year is the fastest rise in interest rates in the last 40 years. But here's something interesting I just wanted to share with you all. You know, typically what happens when the Fed funds rate raises, which it has, and here it's just raised for a quarter point, typically what you would expect is indirectly interest rates on long-term mortgages would go up. However, it's not always that way. And actually what we've seen here in the beginning of this year is a little bit of relief on mortgage rates for long-term mortgages, which is great for all of us. And so I thought it was interesting just to kind of point out how that works. Typically, you know, the way that your mortgage interest rates are actually come to be, it's not just based on what borrowing costs are, what the Fed funds rate is, which affects the 10-year treasury. There's also a a mortgage premium on top of that, that investors and mortgage-backed securities sort of require. And so what's happening right now is that the Fed funds rate ticks up, the 10-year treasury ticks up, but your long-term mortgage interest rates are actually coming down slightly. It's because that mortgage premium actually is coming down slightly. So we've never really talked about that. It's kind of technical, a little nitty-gritty there. The long-term or the, the big picture here is interest rates are going up. Excuse me, Fed funds rate is going up. The Fed is doing that to try to tamp down inflation. We still have a long way to go to do that. But at the same time, your long-term mortgage rates are actually getting a little bit of relief, which is unusual and it's something that we should take advantage of. I don't know if I understood that whole thing, right? So then, so they're they're raising rates and that might lower long-term mortgage. Yeah. Can you explain that to me one more time, GST? So when, yeah, when the Fed, when the Federal Reserve raises rates, that's why we say it indirectly affects mortgage rates. It's because there's a lot of things that have to happen between when the Fed funds rate raises and then your actual mortgage rate comes to be, right? Basically, what happens is when the Fed funds rate raises a little bit, that tends to bump up the rates for your 10-year treasuries. And so 10-year treasuries are actually usually what is most closely related to a a decision for an end investor to invest in a mortgage-backed security, okay? Okay. When I'm saying an investor investing in a mortgage-backed security, for us as borrowers, we think of what our interest rate is that we have to pay. But there is an investor on the other side that is requiring a return on their investor investment, which is that same interest rate. And they want that to be as high as possible. We as borrowers want our interest rate to be as low as possible. But all this is is an investment, right? They're letting us borrow their money and they're requiring a return. So you kind of look at what the 10-year treasury is. And then you look at what the mortgage premium is on top of that, that the market is requiring in order for someone to want to lend us money. And so right, and what what has been the case over the last, I'll call it six months, that premium has been really high. And so our our long-term interest rates have been really high. But even if you had the Fed funds rate going up a little bit, if that mortgage premium comes down a little bit, your end interest rate can actually come down. And that's actually what we're seeing right now, which is the reason why we've seen a little bit of relief for long-term interest rates, mortgage rates, even though the Fed has hiked up the Fed's funds rate for the eighth time in the last year. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That made more sense. Drew Barnhill is also explaining it a bit here in the chat. So I'm, I'm glad that we have this platform to get to kind of go over it. But yeah, okay. Yeah, I get it. So it's... It's not a direct correlation. There is, it is a, it's not directly attributed, but there is a correlation between it. And sometimes there is an opportunity where the the long-term rate and the short-term rate are not doing the same exact thing, but eventually it does kind of get in line. Yeah. You know what? I've got something here. I'm going to try and pull up that I, it's a visual that I think will help explain it a little bit. So I'll try to pull that out as we go through the show here. Okay, cool. All right. So then as you are pulling up that visual, I just want to let you know that Lee Bishop in the chat asked, hey, what's going on, man? Am I not registered for this thing? You didn't say my name. Oh, just, man. Just, just letting people know, Lee, the MVP, is coming to his first IRL meetup in Jacksonville. Super pumped that he's coming. I feel like I feel like we got to correct the, correct the record there, GC. Thank you so much, Lee. I feel terrible, man. You know, as I was like, oh, let me go out and give give a shout out to these folks. I was just going through my Excel doc and I was like, man, there's 
I know I'm going to screw it up. So I'm sorry I screwed that up for the MVP. You have to yeah, forgive Lee me. And Jane, we got to meet Jane as well. I love that. All, all right. right. So now what we are all here for, our POTW, let us magically whisk ourselves away here to 7265 Honda Drive, Jacksonville, Florida, 32222. We're looking at this four bedroom, two bathroom, 1,721 square foot home set at $260,000. Construction status finished. This is clearly a, a rehab here. A leasing term of two years, best in class, annual appreciation rate of 4.6%. That's why people come to a growth market like Jacksonville to get that beautiful 4.6% appreciation. And what us, not your average investors, love to look at here, this IRR of 14.2%. And if you look down here, we got some breaking news happening in this announcement of the PLTW GC. How come this? How come this 10K buyer incentive is still down here? Well, you know what? What, what do they say? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Don't fix it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just trying to come up with something wittier, and I'm sick. So, <laughs> well, there we go. No, no wittiness required here because this is this is great breaking news. Team, we we sat down with my team and we looked at a couple of things when when the incentive was scheduled to expire in June January 31st. We sat down and we said, "All right, let's take a look." Number one, at why we put this incentive in place originally, and the reason that we did that was because. We didn't know what the Fed was going to do when it came to interest rates, long-term interest rates for our clients. And you know, rates getting above 6%, even getting closer, 6.5%, you know, it's tough for folks to make decisions to buy rental properties, especially when interest rates have risen for the fastest growth in the last 40 years. That's, that's what happened for the last six to nine months. And so that was the real genesis of coming up with this incentive. We wanted to make this a really easy reason for you guys to make what we think are really smart decisions to add properties to your portfolio. And secondarily, we said, you know what, we wanted to create some momentum. We wanted to come into 2023 really strong, create a buzz. And when I look at what the incentive has accomplished, it has done both of those things. It's been a really big success. You know, there we just had a, an incredible month as far as properties going under contract. I mean, many of our clients here on the call here are the ones that are purchasing properties. I mean, I could rattle off names that we've, we've done that over the last couple of calls and just, you know, giving congratulations, Bill Green here, just going under contract for a few properties is just an example. So it's, it's working. And as we start to look into what's coming up over the next few months, you know, we still don't really know what the Fed is going to do or what impact that's going to have to long-term interest rates. And, you know, as I just described, sometimes when the Fed raises rates, Interest rates, long-term rates have actually come down a little bit, but a lot of that is for things that are outside of our control. But one thing we do know is that the Fed is going to continue to fight inflation. They are not nearing the end of their rate hikes. And so there's still a little bit of question there. And so we, we kind of landed in the same spot as far as what interest rates and what the Fed is going to do and how that's going to affect our clients. And so we said, let's extend this thing. It's we're kind of in the same place for interest rates. Let's extend this thing. Let's make sure that we keep it going. So we're going to extend the largest incentive package JWB has, has offered. We're not going to change it at all. You get up to about $10,000 in buyer incentives. Many of you have already taken advantage of this. And the way that, that comes through is 2% seller concessions, which comes out to about $5,500 of cash you don't have to bring to the closing table. Then we're also waiving your first tenant placement fee which comes out to about a $1,500 value. And then we're also contributing $3,000 to your maintenance costs. The first $3,000 of costs that come your way will be on JWB's dime when it comes to maintenance. And so we're going to continue this thing, continue to see this thing through the end of the first quarter. So the end of March, we're going to be extending this thing. And so I hope you all continue to take advantage of this. I think this is a great opportunity for you to make wise decisions with your money, especially knowing what your alternatives are right now. And it is not looking good for the stock market. Bonds do not help you get to your financial goals. They do not beat inflation. And rental properties have proven to be consistent and have more upside in the short run and the long run. So I hope you all take us up on it. And we got a little bit more time for all of you. So if you were feeling like you couldn't get it done in time, here's your opportunity.
Love it, man. I think that's a great, great opportunity for folks. For those of you that rush to get in, like Bill, Bill Green is saying he had to do he had to do some dancing to get it in by 131. And Keitha put her third property in by 131. I guess it's a I guess it's a good thing, right? Like now that's behind you. It's all about time and you know, like the, the longer you hold real estate, the better you just so you got a little you got a little head start, but this this opens it up for those of you that weren't able to to get it in by end of January and as they say, if you're if you're pitching a no hitter, you you leave the pitcher in, right? There you go. If it ain't broke, <laughs> don't fit. All right, GC. I got one more question though. What do you love about this property? I thought you'd never ask. I'll tell you what I love about this property. Let's talk about what separates this asset class from most other asset classes, and especially the stock market. For for if we just kind of take our aim there, the fact that you can have recurring income that happens day one on an investment property is unlike what you can get in the vast majority of stocks out there. And even if you do get a dividend in the stock market, it's usually not nearly as much as you get in rental properties. And then you get paid maybe quarterly, even if you do get it. And oh, by the way, that that company that's paying you that dividend could pay you one day, have a dividend, and then decide that the next quarter they're not paying dividends. So the fact that you have steady recurring revenue as a part of this asset class is something that is a huge bonus. And when you have a property like here on Honda Drive, this thing is already rented. The resident moved in this month in January and they have a two-year lease. So this is rented all the way through 2025. So your cash flow positive from day one, it's already rented with a long-term lease. And there are rent escalators built into that lease as well. So starting next January, the rent on this property goes up to $17.25. So these are the things that we don't necessarily shine a light on so specifically for every property we put in front of you. But these are built in with every JWB property, this concept of positive cash flow, uh, recurring revenue, income coming in and consistently on a long-term lease with rent escalators to part of what we do here. And so that's what I love here about this property on Honda Drive. Love it, man. Love it. And you know, it really makes me think of, I just got a new property under a new tenant into one of my properties, my original property, Minosa, right? Got a, got a two-year lease and lease, lease year one is like right under a thousand bucks. Year two, it's like a thousand and some change, right? So the, the rent escalators built in kind of best of both worlds, right? This idea of long-term continuity, reducing vacancy, but also still being able to capitalize on pre-negotiating higher rents in the future, which is usually a, a point of contention, right? When you're doing these short-term leases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome, man. All right. Well, Lee Bishop, our MVP, who you may have heard of, GC, I don't know if you have or not, since you didn't say his name earlier, but he's got a question. He says, Greg, I see that this property is septic. Can you brush on the JWB insurance plan for septic tank paid by the tenants? Can you give people an update on that, GC? I can. In fact, I have a big update. I think we talked about this a while ago, but we haven't talked about it much since. So we made a big change when it came to our, our warranty program for septic. So as you know, we're always looking for the best risk adjusted return for you in the small decisions and the big decisions, right? So when we first started out with our septic warranty program, we looked at costs that we expected our septic warranty our, our properties that are on septic to incur. And we put in a number based on our experience. And, and of course, you know, but we didn't really have the data that, you know, of course, properties would, would incur over those coming years. And so our data continued to get better. But the other thing that we did is we looked at the cost that it would, that, that it would, that our tenant was paying basically that $50 a month. And, you know, at that time, rents could not support that additional $50 a month. But what we've seen over the last couple of years is rents have gone up substantially. And we also got even more data over the last couple of years into what our septic costs are. And so maybe about three months ago or so, we looked at what the cost and the benefit was for the septic warranty program. And our question was, if we took that $50 a month that our residents were paying to the septic warranty provider and we had that money go to our clients, would their return on investment be better? And the answer was a resounding yes. And so this is a, a combination of rents going up in the Jacksonville market. So now rents can be supported there. 
as well as low cost on the septic expenses for properties. And, you know, a part of this too, is we looked at the long-term health of this. And we also wanted to make sure that we had multiple septic providers who could provide this warranty. And we weren't finding a lot of that. And so there's a little bit of concern that if we got too far along into this process, would we be in a situation where we would have a vendor that couldn't actually support the warranty program? And so, you know, all three of those things combined, better returns for clients, you know, from additional rent, and then lower septic costs that we've seen with additional data, as well as a little bit of concern that we might not have additional septic vendors be able to provide for the warranty in the future, we, we reanalyzed it. And we no longer are doing the septic warranty program on new construction homes or renovated homes. Because at the end of the day, we looked at it and we said, we think this is the best risk adjuster return for you. So, so yeah, Lee, I'm glad you asked about it. We haven't talked about it in a little while. But yeah, that septic warranty program is no longer that $50 that you are earning is now additional rent coming to you. And when you look at the numbers, that's going to provide a better return on investment for you. That is what we call a data flywheel story, right? I love I love how JWB is always, we talk about this, right? When we talk about this idea that you operate like if you're like a Silicon Valley tech company at scale, right? You have these innovation days where your team is allowed to bring up new ideas that you test and implement and you look for the data around it. You then put it to, you know, you then experiment with it, see if it works. If it works, you roll it out and you keep measuring it. And if there's a moment to re-improve that thing, you do it again, right? Always continuous growth and improvement. I love it, man. I think it's really, really cool. Yeah. And the, and the great thing here is there's there's no downside to the experience for a client, right? This While we have changed this, right? Your rental income has in, in, improved. It's not like you have to rethink or, re, you know, re reanalyze things. It's just additional rental income coming to you now. And then of course, you know, your septic costs are still built into your expected maintenance cost uh, on your property evaluation. So no change there as well. So yes, yeah, so we think this is a better long-term decision for everybody. There you go. All right. The MVP has another question. He says, I also noticed that this house is 50 years old. It looks to be completely renovated. Can you talk about how much on average JWB puts into a house not built by JWB to bring these up to JWB standards? I think I'm going to say JWB one more time. JWB. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, not, not unusual for us to have a home that is built 50 years ago or 40 years ago or 60 years ago. A lot of the housing stock in the neighborhoods that you want to be investing in Jacksonville were built around that time. And so, but what is important when you're making a decision to invest in, in any property, whether that's new construction, new or construction or a renovation, is that this home needs to, number one, not have any deferred maintenance and then be renovated to a place where you're expecting a family to live in there for multiple years. And in, for lack of a better word, expecting to beat the property up a little bit, but it's not going to result in high property turn costs for you. And so that is what our standard for JWB renovations is. So we're making sure that all of your major mechanicals are to our standard, right? To our standard doesn't just mean that they're working, right? There are many times that we buy a home that is that is in need of renovation and the AC is working, but it might be 10 years old or 15 years old. You know, that unit gets replaced, right? So no deferred maintenance is a part of the JWB standard, making sure that it can withstand uh, a resident living in the home for many years, and then making sure that it's going to rent very quickly when it gets on, on the open market. And so from a dollar figure perspective, on average, we spend a little bit over $40,000 every time we renovate a home. And that's, you know, these homes are not that big. These are, you know, 1,200, 1,500, maybe 1,700 square foot homes. So to spend $40,000 plus you can see that we're major, making major improvements to certainly the major mechanicals and then other parts of the home. Love it, man. The beauty of vertical integration and being able to do all this stuff within your machine and, and knowing what the standard is and having the data to know what drives down future maintenance costs and increases ROI for the, for the investor. Love it. All right. We got Sir Jeff Bolton in the house. He's back. Jeff, good to have you back. I know that you don't make every show, but it's good to good when you participate, man. He's got a challenging question for you, GC. 
He says, what don't you like about the property? If you had to debate the other side of the coin, what risks would you call out? Oh, man, that is a great question, Sir Jeff Bolton. What don't I like about the property? Oh, man, goodness. I mean, I, I, I can, I can yeah. throw something out there, GC. I think cool. one of the, you know, we do talk a lot about this is a normalized over the life of an investment, holding this thing long term. You know, mm -hmm. like this is a something that you can count on to perform over a full market cycle. And yet in this asset class, at the end of the day, people are an ultimate variable, right? So like having a resident in a in a home and and the day to day, right? Like maybe when we go over when we go over kind of like the portfolios of our of our not your average investor guest investors, every once in a while there's a year where it doesn't perform in a snapshot the way that you expected it to, right? And that's bound to happen over a 10 to 30 year thing. And depending on when that hits you, it, it, it could hit you early in the life of the investment. It could hit you late in the life of the investment. It's bound to happen at some point, but it all, it takes a certain degree of like faith and understanding and trust to know that this thing normalizes over time and it's going to perform a certain way, right? So that's that's something, right? I love that. That's great. Because if you look at the at the biggest pain points for this investment, it's not that people can't accomplish their return on investment and the expectation that we have for that. It's at that moment in time when you get hit with a $3,000 property turn or a $4,000 property turn, right? That moment in time, not fun. And that's, you know, unfortunately, that's a part of it, right? There's a way to combat that, right? By preparing in advance for your reserves and to make sure that you can even put a larger escrow balance with JWB to limit that out. So there's ways to account for that. But you don't have that in the stock market, right? You don't have that with bonds. You don't have that punch to the gut that you may get a call and you might have a $3,000 expense coming your way. So that's certainly something that I don't like. Nobody likes. It's a part of it as far as rental property investing goes. Another thing, just looking at the other side of the coin, you know, this requires stamina. This requires a long-term outlook. Other investments do not. And so you win a lot if you have the long-term mindset by investing in this property or in rental properties in general. But if you are quick with the trigger finger and when something doesn't go right and you get emotional about it and you want to sell this thing in a year or two years, it's usually not going to work out well for you just because not saying that the property is going to lose value, but you know there's costs that come along with buying and selling real estate you generally lose about 10% in costs when it comes to selling through a realtor and then holding, closing, selling costs. So you have to give it time for all five profit centers to work in your favor. So yeah, so that would be a couple of things that I just don't like. If I could have it differently, I I, I would love it to, to be different. But you know, those are a part of kind of a cost of doing business to find an asset like this that performs really, really well. You gotta, you gotta be able to nail those two things. Makes sense. And that's, you know, that's on an asset level, which he asked, you know, maybe he, maybe he's also asking on a property level, maybe you can address how you see, you know, the evaluation on an individual property GC. Like, is there anything not to like about a, about an individual, this individual property? You know, I, when, when you guys ask me, what do I love the most about this property? You know, I point out the thing that I like the most about it. But even when I was describing Honda earlier, I said, this is the same that it has with every other property. And so I, I want you guys to see that I don't get overly hyped about one property and think that it is any better than any other asset that we sell. We sell in this very small box of things that work. And I, I, don't, I don't get about one property as well, like any one property, because we stick to the same criteria over and over and over again, right? This is a property on the west side of Jacksonville in a neighborhood that we have hundreds and hundreds of other properties that we've been performing for clients. It's roughly the same price, roughly the same IRRs, you know? So I, I know I don't want to come off like I'm, I'm, you know, only seeing the positives here, but, but I don't see a negative for this property, just like I don't see an overwhelming positive for any property I put in front of you over the next one I'm going to show you. That's just being real. Yeah, that's why I wanted to bring it up, right? It's this idea, if we have somebody new here, it's 
it's kind of mind blowing that you think of you think of these properties as widgets, right? Like when 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 the whole purpose of the existence of the team and what you're doing at JWB, right? Like you've built this like hedgehog that is really really good at standardizing the performance of properties in Jacksonville of a certain type, right? And as long as it's within that certain type all the infrastructure that you've put around all the data and all those super talented people and all the contractors and the relationships that you built are made to standardize the experience so that as an investor, we can be looking here at where it says IRR and feel pretty confident that you're going to hit that or exceed it. And that's really like the one variable that you are controlling for all these other numbers or inputs that really are just built to come out to this number. And that's what you're really delivering much more than a house. Yeah. And, and, and I get to see the returns on all of these properties, over 3000 properties that we have sold to the clients. We continue to manage. And there's no property that I look at and I'm like, Ooh, you know what? I knew that one was going to perform the best. Or if there's one that is struggling, there's no way I could look at any of these and say, Oh, you know what? Hmm, that one's going to, that one's going to struggle to perform. It doesn't work that way. Right. Sir, cer certainly some perform better than others, but a hundred percent, of JWB clients are overperforming for their returns, 100%. And there are some properties that are renovations that are built 50 years ago, like this one here on Honda Drive. There are some that are brand new construction. Some are two bedrooms, some are three bedrooms, four or five bedrooms, right? Some have a certain higher rent amount, some have a certain lower rent amount, but they just stick in this box and we just do it over and over and over again. And that's why it's successful. Again, if it ain't broke, Pablo. You keep the pitcher in. You keep the pitcher in. There you go. <laughs> you don't pull the lefty. All right. Bill Green's got a question saying, answer only if appropriate for today's subject matter. Bill, I'm just going to go with it. With JWB managed properties, do you distribute the rent money to the mortgager with those properties that have mortgages? Can investors direct JWB to distribute any positive cash flows back into the mortgage rather than it being sent to the investor? No, man, great question. I don't think anybody's ever asked this question on the show. So I'm sure a lot of folks will, will benefit from you asking that question. JWB does not make your mortgage payments for you. And we do not help you pay down your mortgage for you. We have a very, we have a line in the sand where we are not going to be responsible for making your mortgage payments for you. And, and so with that, it, it, we are, we of course are not going to pay down your mortgage for you. What we will do is facilitate and show you a better way to do this, work on the strategy with you about if paying down mortgages early is the right approach for you, how to do it. This is what we have talked about, the C3X compound cash flow calculator that we have talked about on the show before. I know there was a request for us to go more in depth than that. And so uh, I think we'll be doing that in an upcoming show, the, the waterfall effect, paying down mortgage. So we will happily show you what to do. But when, when for the mountain man, who's just put his first properties under contract, once those have been purchased by you, they're rented, the rental income comes in, JWB keeps the property management fee, which is 10%. And then we distribute the remaining amount out to you. Of course, if there are any maintenance items, we would less that out. And then we would distribute the remaining amount out to you. You get to do what you want to do with those, those cash flows. And if it's the right thing for you to pay down your mortgage, you would be the one who would actually pay down that mortgage. There you go. And I know I, there's, there's a really cool side chat happening right now in the, in the chat of everybody's talking about like their portfolio manager and, and how much they love them. I know that I've, so Sarah is my portfolio manager. And I know that now that I'm at these like three homes and I've acquired these and they're all cash flowing positive. I asked her to just kind of like go through that C3X, give me the plan. And then all I have to do is just kind of like set my automatic payments every single month to pay down that one. So I know as the, as the consumer, the way that I get it is it's kind of like having a coach in your corner. So you're just kind of like, Hey, can you just tell me which one is the most attractive for me? And they'll go figure it out. They'll tell you. And then you just got to punch the buttons in the, in your bank account and stuff like that. So not, not a very heavy lift. It's pretty cool. All right. So Bill Green back with another question. He says, do Jack's renters have any preference to rent in the East side as to be closer to the beaches? You know, preference and rent amount are, you know, 
certain, you know, we got to take those into consideration. So I'm sure if you, if you said everything was the same rent amount, would people rather rent closer to the beach? I'd say the answer is yes, but that's why rent amount's a great equalizer. And so po- folks are looking to, for the best value in that area that they want to rent or can rent in. And so we want to make sure that we're the best value on that street, on that block where, where they are choosing to rent. So that's the goal. So Hopefully that gives you the answer there. That's why these neighborhoods have such rental demand. That's why we choose these neighborhoods because the rent compared to the purchase price is a great ratio for us to produce positive cash flow for you. And then our job is to make sure that we have the best value and service for that resident to choose us to to rent the home with for a long period of time. There you go. Michael Santorius with another question. Greg. The lifespan of plumbing varies by the type of material used. I understand plumbing can last 25 to 70 years. This home is 61. Does JWB scope the plumbing to the street when doing a full reno like this and identify the life of the plumbing or is that up to the buyer? We would. We would. If there is anything that would lead us to believe that there are challenges with the plumbing, we're going to do the full scope all the way to the street. Uh, It's a really great question, Michael. A lot of turnkey companies do not do any type of scope and they don't do it all the way to the street. But that's really important because, you know, plumbing is one of your major mechanicals. If it's not working well, it can cost you a lot of money. It can be a terrible resident experience. So yes, absolutely. We do that. Uh, And I also want to say a big shout out to Michael. Michael sent, I talked to Lauren Alleman on our team. Lauren's one of the directors uh, in our business of, of sales and service. And Michael had the opportunity to speak with her earlier this week. And just, I was blown away. He just sent me an email. I haven't even had a chance to respond, Michael, but you sent an email to me saying what an asset Lauren is and just singing her praises. And I wanted to say thank you so much for for not just thinking that, but taking the time to write that. I'm going to make sure that that's shared with our team. Every Tuesday in our Tuesday morning meeting, we share um, testimonials. I'm going to have that testimonial read aloud to make sure that everybody understands the level of service that Lauren has given you and our entire service team. So I just want to say thank you so much for, for sending that in. Awesome. I love that. I love that. We're getting a lot of interest on the, on the C3X conversation. I know that we're going to, we're going to hit on it again, but just letting you all know, we did, there is a past episode that we did hit on the C3X with Paul Shively, I believe, right? You can find that on the Not Your Average Investor Show YouTube channel or the podcast if that's how you like to listen. And I know that Madison is looking it up and she's going to share it with Keith who's asking for it in the chat. So let her know if you want a copy of that show so you can revisit it, would be would be happy to share it with you. We've got a listener all the way from France. Anonymous Attende has a question. Can you restate the levels at which management fees are reduced as your portfolio grows? Absolutely. So this is called the JWB Elite Program. And many of you who are who are clients who are on the show right now, you're a part of the elite. When you get to your fifth property that you purchase through JWB, your property management reduce, your property management fees reduce. It is no longer 10% of the rents that we collect as your fee. It's now 9%. So it saves you hundreds of dollars right there. And then when you get to 10 properties that are purchased through JWB, your property management fees reduce again, and they go down to 8%. And this is available to all of you. And again, right now with the incentive that is offered, you know, there's, there's a lot of incentives. If, If this is a time that you're considering going from three properties to five properties, you can walk in with those, you know, $10,000 of incentives when you buy times two, there's no limit to the number of properties you put under contract and get those incentives. And then on the back end, you could see your property management fees reduced from 10% per month for all five properties now down to 9%. Again, once you get to five properties, drops from 10 to nine. Once you get to 10 properties, it drops from nine to eight. There you go. Another opportunity on how JWB ends up overperforming in their numbers because you have all these other bells and whistles as the investment keeps working for you. You're also creating other ways to to create win-wins. GC, I think I'm at a... I think I'm at max capacity. I think Tylenol's wearing off. We're at, a, we're at a good point here. No more questions. Happy to happy to kind of start winding this show down. This is a good one, man. I love I love when we I love the POTW because it's just like we have this one sheet that we're gonna talk about, and we really just rely on the community to ask great questions. And you always do, right? So I'm just really really grateful that we have 
40 plus people that joined that joined us today. You take an hour out of the middle of your day to show up here, ask great questions, provide great value for everybody else involved. It's a really, really awesome thing that I can just show up here sick and congested and you do my work for me, man. So I just really, really appreciate the community for, for carrying us today, man. Any, any, any words for you? Oh, let's, uh, let's remind everybody about the meetup. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that first Bob's appreciate you, brother. I know you've been struggling. <laughs> I know even I texted I texted you late, late last night when you were like, oh man, I'm sick. I feel miserable. I'm like, hey man, I can do the show. It's all good. And Pablo's like, nah, man, I got this. I'm not gonna miss the show. So well, this is I, the best I feel all day when I get to do this, man. <laughs> a level of commitment's awesome. And then, you know, I was just thinking, I'll share it with you guys. We haven't done a whole lot of these like big meetups locally with the Not Your Average Investor show. You know, it's a big burden to do these things. And for me, you know, there's a big burden of planning the day and all of this and all this other stuff. And I start to like, think about that. And I'm like, Oh, okay, we got to make sure that we can control you know, 25, 50 people coming in. I want to make sure they have a fantastic experience. There's a little bit of a burden. And I start to kind of get wrapped up in my head. And then I start to think about the people that are actually coming. And I look at that list. Number one person I'm going to mention Lee Bishop, the MVP, and the other 20 or so folks that are that are already here for this event and i just think it's going to be just like this it is going to be a a, a a community of friends and there's going to be great questions there's going to be a lot of learning but it's not like it's a cold room where you're going in and you're going to have to impress people or you know try to make sure that you know they're having a good time we all have a good time every tuesday and every thursday and so i'm so excited for all of you to be here for the tour. I really hope you come. I hope if you've been listening to the show or the podcast and you'd like to be, you know, part of a community of like-minded folks that are interested in this asset class, interested in Jacksonville, that you take advantage of this opportunity. It's not something that we're going to do a whole lot uh, in Jacksonville because it is a big burden. We might do it once a year, twice a year. So I hope you take advantage of it. And I'm just super excited. I, I'm so thankful for the quality of the people that we have in our community. You guys make this a ton of fun. So go to jwbrealestate.com slash tour if you haven't signed up yet. We're going to be limiting it. I don't know what we're going to limit it to. I'll probably tell you guys sometime soon, but it's going to be something within one bus full as we figure out how much, how many seats we have on the bus. So yeah, we're looking forward to it. Hope you guys take advantage of it. I love it, GC. Another great show. Tuesday, we are talking about is the 6040 portfolio dead? How do we invest for long-term success these days? I don't know about you, man, but I've seen a ton of these articles that are like, is the 60 portfolio dead? Is it 80-20 now? What's going on? This is going to be a not your average insights type episode, but I'm really, really pumped about it. And I love how you put that thing. If you're coming with us on February 25th, you're not going to walk in a room where you got to impress a bunch of people, but you're definitely going to walk in a room where nobody is average. I'll see you next week. See you, everybody.